Hi everybody, Glenn Trudeau here again from Musicians on Couches Drinking Coffee. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't get to see that last incredible interview I did with Carmine Apice. Man, he's only probably one of the greatest rock drumming legends of all time. Yeah, that's the you know, little thing like that. But I get it, it's a 46 minute long video, so you know, it's, it's a lot of time to commit to watch something. And I don't know, when I watch other people's stuff, I don't always have time to do that. So what did I do? I cut that video down into some little short excerpts just for that purpose. So, taken from the longer video, the link to the longer video is in the, in the description for you. And enjoy this little excerpt from Musicians on Couches Drinking Coffee. Enjoy. By the way, uh, if Marissa Tomei is watching, call me anytime. Vanilla Fudge, your, your first real yes. national act? Well, I didn't mean national act, but I, I played, you know, around gigs and, you know, I played gigs and we played opposite Jimi Hendrix in New York here and clubs and the shitholes, you know, actually right, right. Up, up, up a west side here, 77th and Broadway. Uh, I'm on 70th and Broadway and, and back in, you know, 1963, it was like Panic and Needle Park, that movie. You know, it was a drug right. addicts and hookers and gay and gay guys and lesbians and and uh, gang leaders and you know it was just terrible. You know, and that's what we played at an R&B band. We played there with uh, opposite Jimmy Jimmy James and and the Blue Flames. You know, we played there for like a week, opposite each other, smoking pot on the, uh, right, on, right. the, on, the on the when we were off talking. And Jimmy talked about making it. The only day before that, I played weddings, bar mitzvahs, and all that. When I was 17, I bought a brand new 64 Chevy in 64, uh -huh. 27 Super Sport with, with the money I made from playing. I put wow. uh, $1,250 down on it. It cost $2,900 with tax and everything. And uh, I paid off the rest every month, 70 bucks a month. And I paid it off. Vanilla yeah, so then we would be playing with the band that I played with, with Hendrix. We were playing in a club in Jersey. It was like 1966. Uh, they had different incarnations of that band. Sometimes it was a four piece, sometimes it was seven piece with horns. So at the time we were playing with the four piece and uh, Mark Stein and Tim Bogut came into the Choo Choo Club in, in Jersey, which is where the Rascals started. And they came in and I, you know, we took a break and they come up and say, hi, I'm Mark. And, uh, Tim and we, we have a band called the Pigeons and we're looking for a drummer and we just watch you play and, and you seem to have everything we, we need in the drummer. We have technical and you sing and got a great foot and all that stuff. Would you be interested maybe in checking us out? Well, you know, I, I'm thinking to myself, well, I don't need these guys. I'm making $200 a week, you know, back right, in 1966, right. $200 a week was good money, you know? So... I said, well, what do you play, Tim? He said, I play bass. I said, oh, I never really played with a bass player because all my bands had a left-hand organ bass, you know, or the foot organ bass. So I said, I'll go check it out. So I went and checked it out. And they said, look, our manager, he owns the Action House out here. The Vagrants are now big with Leslie West. And I used to play with the Vagrants in the city. This is opposite when they first started. You know, 1961 or two, now it's like 66, and they got a huge following. They're doing these production numbers, which is what they called. And right. uh, that was the fad in Long Island, production numbers. You know, the vagrants, Billy Joel with the hassles, the illusions, the rich kids. It was all production numbers. So, so that's what the pigeons wanted to do. So I played with them. They said, our manager who owns the Action House, which is a club that every, all these bands play. This guy was a mafia guy uh, from the Goodfellas connection, you know. Right. And, uh, so he put us on a salary. He said we, he would put us on a salary. So I played with them and I was blown away. 
because they were all great. Mark Stein's voice was unbelievable, you know? And I, right. I had the same kind of vibrato they had, because I sang doo-wop in Brooklyn. And, and uh, you know, I was like 18 years old at the time. And uh, Tim sang like that, and I never played with a bass player, and he was phenomenal. And the guitar player was pretty good too, you know? And I said, wow. So I said, you know what? I said, you know what? I'll do it. Yeah. You know, and I, I always tell them I did it. Nine months later, we had a hit, a hit on the, on the charts. <laughs> you yeah. see, I joined and you got a hit on the charts, you know. But you know, and then we, we did we did all the stuff that you do. We we went in with that vein of music. We matched our music with the lyrics, and right. I think we're the only ones of all those bands that did that. But we had more facility than everybody. We had four voices. Right. Great, better musicians than everybody. You know, so one each band had a great musician. Vagrant had Leslie. You know, Bill, uh, Hassels had Billy Joel. You know, uh, the Rich Kids had Richard Super that went on to write songs for Aerosmith and stuff. Right. You know? So, but we had four voices. We had better musicians. Every musician in our band was better than all the other bands. I'll tell you, Vanilla Fudge was, is just one of my favorite bands of all time. And uh, okay, well, some of the that. versions you have of tunes, I mean, uh, even your version of Eleanor Rigby. Uh, Unbelievable. Just fantastic, fantastic. And I think my personal opinion is that Vanilla Fudge is like the father in some ways to what came later, which was like Zeppelin and some of that other stuff. Oh, without a doubt. 